Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is uh, the legendary Iron Man run of Better One of Long War. We are still in the middle of the liberation of our first region. This is the HQ of the Aliens here. And needless to say, if you have followed the last two episodes, we are close to a hundred kills, but there are still more aliens in here. Now, <clears throat> it is the time to hopefully finish uh, the mission during uh, this episode and not make a part 4 out of it. And I reflected a bit about where we are overall and figured it was an okay fight so far. Our biggest problem, however, was uh, that we have used probably a bit too many cooldowns. So I will be very careful to save some cooldowns for the final boss battle. But let's start with getting rid of the remaining lost. Oh my gosh, uh, there are even more. All right. I wasn't expecting that, <clears throat> which means this is probably a round for us to sort of get into position with everyone. At Kalian Poe, high ground over here. Moving to position. Yeah, the game still has a bit of latency in it because of so many enemies. We're putting our front line just a little bit further forward, and everyone else should be kind of on the rooftop. Hayward, our sniper. Should get one of the prime spots, to be honest. I am almost thinking whether or not over here is a good place for her to be. Yeah, but... Given the overall situation, let's just move Dark Tarnaxis down here. He is a frontline character anyways. With his destructive, uh, with his destructive arsenal. Oh, look at that! We can't even get upstairs because we would be poisoned. Well, need to wait another round then. Good. The idea is we should populate both of the rooftops. If, if you say so. Our grenadier can move a little bit further forward. We can put him on top of the other rooftop of the next round. Yeah, now it's Overwatch. Getting our Templar back. And let's just kill the loss for now. My calculations tell me that we are probably in for two more alien packs. Which means anywhere between realistically six to ten aliens. Uh, the pack of the boss is usually uh, always a bit larger, kind of a six to eight enemy pack. And there we go. Still quite a bit of um, loss in here.
but I do have a decent idea how we can get rid of all of them without wasting too much ammunition. Fury moves in and we're simply going to use our sidearm. Yeah, that's, by the way, something that Long War could rethink. I like the idea that the losses are a bit more, quote-unquote, threatening, just power and numbers. But you can't solve a difficulty problem only with putting numbers on the battlefield. Number one, um, the way that the engine works, it is just not scalable, and you can see that there are frame drop rates even on better uh, systems just because it never has been modeled to uh, to support like 20 plus enemies at the same time. So that would be probably crit uh, uh, criticism point number one, but even more importantly, numbers just don't matter if you can kill them um, reliably. So instead, it might have been a bit of an idea to also give them special traits, make them more durable, make them faster, just overall make them a bit more dangerous, but still keep a lower amount of enemies. Just my two cents on the loss topic. I know it is absolutely phenomenal having kind of a zombie-like uh, game, and by the way, it would be so easy to have a post-apocalyptic scenario with zombies in the XCOM engine, it just would need to work on the performance to make sure that everything's running smooth, right? But yeah, I can see where the appeal is coming from. Still, gotta do it right. From a game design perspective, uh, that's one of the weaker points of Long War. Definitely weaker points of Long War. The whole design that just more enemies will solve the difficulty uh, problem. Dark Tower doesn't have any armor, unfortunately, so we might want to keep him a bit further back. Just seeing that he has only five hit points, that's almost a one shot. Okay. Good, we got people in a decent position. Let's say if an enemy patrol was to run into us, I would be somewhat confident that uh, that we could kill one or two right away, just with a number of overwatches. Need to keep our um, our pack together and not spread out all too much. So it's going to be a bit of a careful overwatch crawl for the next few rounds. The losses are gone. That's good. We can't regain shadows. Sane doesn't have that ability yet. And this here is us really carefully crawling forward. Okay, nothing. By the way, this here definitely looks suspicious. I haven't heard any any motion sounds yet, which tells me that the last pack might not be kind of a wandering pack or a patrol. It's probably rather stationary somewhere within the buildings, I would assume. I'm just applying general XCOM logic of how the pods are being deployed. Putting Dark Tower. We have a nice little line of enemy uh, of XCOM soldiers here. 
putting Roby up here. Okay, I'll go. And putting Zirkim up here. Like I said, it's going to be partially a pretty slow Overwatch crawl. Not the biggest fan of the strategy, but the boss pack is nothing to be underestimated. So we're playing it safe. Moving to designated position. And last but not least, Fury. Oh, come on. Good. Time for us to go on Overwatch with everyone. And hope that they are running into us. It's interesting to see even the corpses of all of the enemies slow down the Overwatch uh, rate and the frame rate in general. Which tells me it's definitely the textures of uh, the enemies. Bigger missions with 100 tush enemies just seem to slow down the engine way too much. I also looked whether or not there is a quote unquote corpse decay function, but there isn't because the logic for XCOM is you keep the corpses. So you can't just let them decay, you can even pick them up in some of the instances and carry them. On the move. Still nothing, how is that even possible? We hear zero movement activity. No movement whatsoever. All right, double movement with our sniper. This here is a good sniping position. I'm all over. I like it. Dark tower moves. All right, I'll go. Got to make sure that we are not giving into the temptation of putting too many people next to one another because then an explosion can hit them all. And we really don't want that to happen. Zirkim over here. Moves a bit closer. Yeah, and we got a strategically advantageous position. Which brings us to Fury, parking him here. And we're overwatching everyone. I'll just cut this out of the video so that it's faster for you guys. Another turn without alien movement, but we got some losses coming in. So even more kills and even more bodies on the floor after this round. All right, we killed a few with Overwatch, but we could have done better. All right, time for another cleanup round. This time, let's use our sniper. So I am hoping that uh, the loss will be calm for a few rounds because it starts becoming a bit annoying to always kill them. If 
Fury moves in here. And can hopefully take out all of the uh, almost all of them. I'm not even sure. I mean, we got the dark event with loss on all of the missions. I'm not sure why they would appear, for instance, on a black side facility. Like this here is the headquarter of the aliens. Why would there be losts running around like that? Somewhat counterintuitive. If I would be running a black side facility, I wouldn't be letting all of the losts in. Good. That worked out quite well. Moving to here. And we got all of the losses covered. Perfect. Enemy down. That's it. I'm out. Moving into cover, and it's another round of Overwatch. I haven't seen any alien movement, not even a movement indicator yet, which concerns me greatly, because it means they are very far away and not moving. Reloaded. If you're close to an alien uh, pack, even if they aren't moving, you would get a movement indicator that they are close. Even if they uh, stand perfectly still. So it's a, a method to kind of figure out if they're, for instance, below us. But apparently... They must be at the exact other side of the map. But there's only wilderness out there. I have a hard time to understand where they should be. Let's take a look where they could be. Right after the round. Alright, as per the usual, no movement. So let's take a look at the map in general. So that's the, that's the edge of the map. This is definitely not a spot where they would have been. Uh, theoretically, they could be underneath us, but we would have had movement indicators if that would have been the case. My money is probably on this building. However, it's a very well windowed building, so it would be extremely hard for them to not be spotted out. You can spot even through the window here. So... If anything, they must be like right behind the door. Okay, and then of course there is the option that they are further down here. And to be honest, I'm not even sure how far the map... Oh, well, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Chances are that they are way further down the line than I initially thought. Let's make an educative guess. Fury moves up. Haven't found anyone. Okay, since hell hasn't broken loose, it's a pretty solid assumption that no one is in here. However, the back door is open, which tells us something or someone has been slithering through here. And that could have been the one pack uh, which added from this side. So I am not terribly concerned about someone being in our flank. They are probably further down in the rest of the map.
Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, let's move over here and get a few of our soldiers on top of the roof because this is the next sort of high ground that we're going to take. And if Edgar Allan Poe doesn't trigger anything, which he does not, I consider it to be safe. Moving our sniper over here. Next round I'd like to move her up there for a really good uh, shooting position. Alright, double moving Roby to here. Going to move him on top of the roof as well. Roger that. Double moving Zirkem. Let's hope we're not getting ambushed this turn because we find ourselves in a transition phase and that would mean we have only a very limited amount of overwatches. Normal XCOM logic would demand that we're definitely going to be ambushed just because we have the lowest amount of overwatches but yeah maybe for once that's not true. Okay, let's see what the enemies are doing. <laughs> Nothing. Not a single bit of movement. Very interesting. Fury begins to move just a bit further. No contact. Ooh, there is a huge building back here. Alright, that's where the boss is at. Can almost guarantee you that that is the case. Moving Roby into a nice little shooting position up here. Moving out. Moving our sniper into probably the best shooting position up here. I mean, on the other hand, the sniper over here would have had really, really decent angles and no interference of <coughs> this spaceship here. Up here might be also a good place for, for a sniper. Good. Getting our grenadier to the front line because if we're really triggering something, we need to remove the cover. Moving Zirkim. Moving Edgar Alien Poe. Our front line is in position, Dark Tarnoxus, I would still say we're keeping him just a tiny bit further to the back. Don't need to ask twice. And in the meantime, we're overwatching. Okay, let's see if we're triggering some aliens. No, we're not, but uh, the holes and echoing of a lost swarm nearby tell us that there is soon going to be another swarm. I'm definitely putting my money on this building here. This looks like the central. Again, starting to take one scout, a bit closer, nothing interesting. I 
taking the rest of the front line a bit further. This here, by the way, if you ever find yourself wanting to take cover here, I would recommend not to do so. I've made really, really, really bad experiences uh, with uh, the cover essentially not being like stable. Um, it might look like cover, but um, I had a couple of games where or that piece of cover just wasn't really existing, i.e. you did not have any cover whatsoever. And that stinks. Um, instead, moving our Grenadier to here. And we'll put everyone on high ground slash in a better position. Dark Tarnaxis, full cover, out of line of sight. Roby, Zirkim, and Edgar Alien Poe. Just so we're not standing too close together. Uh, let's position ourselves here and here. Okay. Got it covered. Affirmative. Covering now. Scanning. I'll keep it under watch. I would be interested to see if I was right with the building. And there's a swarm of lost that appears. Apparently there's another building back there. I like our high ground here. And let's maybe get a bit more attention from whatever pack is hiding, because if there is an explosion, that pack might be investigating the area. I don't mind another Lost Swarm, because if we're fighting against uh, the boss pack, that often means that they are taking the overwatch shots, which is actually beneficial for us. I like our position. I think it's good. I don't want to give it up that easily. And I most certainly don't want to just rush in. Instead, what we're going to do is a bit of overwatch here. Nothing wrong with uh, dealing with the loss that way. They can't immediately reach us. Maybe short of the loss dasher, but they still can't deal any damage. There we go. Now no one can reach us directly. Good. The idea is I still want to kind of lure out the boss pack into a disadvantageous situation for them. Us being on high ground and having really solid cover and kind of funneling them into our range is something that it, that would be very, very helpful for us. I'm just not sure if the boss pick will 
will react or if they are stationary and just won't move at all. And one of the big unknowns as well is how will the loss interact. My hope is that they are simply going to di uh, distract the boss pack. Not even close. Big deal. All right, we clearly haven't found the boss pack yet, so it's time for us to move a bit closer. Fury is going to do that. And we haven't triggered anything. Good for us. Let's get rid of the last loss here. By the way, I'm so grateful that we do have the Between the Eyes mod. Alright, that'll take care of all of them. Now, our biggest problem is that this here is blocking line of sight, which means we might want to move up a bit closer to this line here and then start tackling the building. Building looks great. Lots and lots of explosives in there. This building here could be as well the HQ. I don't know very real options for both of the buildings. So we're essentially moving up. I'm on the move. Taking the moves first of uh, the of the XCOM agents that potentially would trigger anything. Since that's not the case. Moving with others. It's again one of those transition rounds where you wouldn't want to be uh, spotted out. Copy that. And we leave the sniper up here. I don't mind that. And let's move Roby up here. Most of us are, or most of the operatives are in half cover, so clearly not a position where we would want to stay for longer uh, terms. But for now, it'll do. What I want to do is take the tower here <clears throat> and eventually also take the entrance. All right, there's probably going to be a swarm of loss due to the explosions. It's going to come in and we still haven't seen any alien activity. By now, I am almost convinced that there's only the boss pack left. It's very unlikely that you have two stationary packs, but the boss pack might be large. Could be easily eight enemies. And there's the swarm we were talking about.
Interestingly enough, the swarm hasn't triggered an enemy pack. So maybe the boss pack is further away. Because they can very much trigger an enemy pack. Let's say if an enemy pack would be like right here in the window. It would have been triggered by them. Good. Same old tactic as before. We're using Fury here. There we go. This shouldn't trigger anyone because the, the loss haven't triggered an enemy yet. Yep, I was right. And now we're just thinning them down once again. Oh my gosh, already half an hour into this episode and all I did is killing dozens and dozens of losses. That's clearly interesting content, guys. I apologize for the way that that is going. But I also don't want to just cut it out because uh, then we're kind of jumping into maybe the end of the mission and everyone's wondering, how did you even get here? I think there are some lessons um, to be learned from simply yeah, knowing how to carefully move and so on. <clears throat> so I truly think that that is helpful. But I also must admit it could be a bit faster. And not all of it is me slow clicking. It's also the engine as well as the fucking boss pack that just doesn't want to show up. So we're trying to kill all of them in one go. Again, we're not trying to trigger the enemies for now. Okay, I would definitely take the last uh, action to reload. We don't want to stand with the zero ammunition. Good, we're moving. Quite well. I think we're going to take the high ground here. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. Putting everyone in a nice little line. And then it's a good moment to reload for everyone. I think we can move up to this fence here next round. And then break the door. Before we do that, it's a good round to actually reload. This is something that is very easy to forget if you're specifically if you're under time pressure you're always <clears throat> looking for that overwatch and sometimes sometimes you're doing it with only one shot uh, left 
which makes your next round so much more difficult. All right, so all of the loss are dead. This guy who's standing there is an illusion. Let's make sure <clears throat> that we can move up here without triggering anything. We can. Seems clear from the inside. I'm just double checking that the fields are actually empty. Seems clear. Bringing the soldiers into position. Solid copy. All right, I'll call. By thinking about, I might not want to take cover behind the car. Just out of experience, if too many. Player, uh, too many soldiers are standing there, they will use explosives, explosives can explode the car, and that would be a tragedy. Up to here. Heading there now. Our sniper should get a bit closer. Matter of fact, we're going to transition quite a bit this round. One of the things that might not be obvious if you're new to XCOM is I am always moving the first one or two soldiers into positions where it's very likely that they're going to trigger someone and everyone else is just shadowing their movements. That way I know that we're not going to be spotted out. Also, specifically when I know that we could be ambushed anytime soon, take a high priority in really keeping people reloaded. <clears throat> because after, after triggering an enemy pack, you often find yourself in a one, two, three rounds of shootout. And the difference between winning and losing that one can be the amount of ammunition that you do have. All right, time to breach. Let's open the door. And we got nothing. Ooh. Everyone was already excited. And then this was a complete no factor. So, there is a chance that the last pack is actually in here, but could be also within this building. The best way to find out is, as per the usual, to use high ground. I'm not even kidding you guys. High ground is so unbelievably good in XCOM 2. Because we can simply use these little shafts here and drop into the building much, much more efficient than than taking uh, the low route. Okay, clearly we have triggered something. And finally the waiting time is over. Where is the enemy pack? Has come. Told you it's going to be an effing six, seven, eight man pack.
<laughs> oh my gosh, it is a large pack. Holy moly. Not the best place for us to spot them out. But then again, there is no such thing as a best place to spot them out. Um, I'm considering taking full cover here. And I'll give them a really nice little welcome gift. Full cover. Unfortunately, we don't have a flashbang grenade left over. Oh, come on. Don't... Oh. Even more enemies. Interesting. <clears throat> Let's take a look. We got two stun lancers, a purifier, an advent shield bearer, the captain with a lot of armor, and two further down there. So that's like what? Two, four, six, eight, plus three. Yep. We knew it's going to be rough, and it is not disappointing our expectations. So this grenade will be pretty important. Can we hit more than just a few? Ah. No, we can't. Well, that is a bit disappointing. The generator in here certainly could be exploded, but we would need to hit it uh, first. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out as easy. Still, I think the grenade here will give us certain advantages, such as putting one of the stun lances behind the wall, because they are going to drop down. Well, or not. We could hit everyone with a vault. Wouldn't be too bad. Uh, they will take some damage and they sometimes can be disoriented. I like the idea of flashbanging uh, these guys up there, but I think the only one with a flashbang currently is Edgar Alien Poe, and he's just too far away, really. What we can do is... We can give our Grenadier here an aid protocol, making his cover even better. Specifically helpful against the stun lancers that are going to definitely charge him. So we don't have any revival protocol left. Uh, if he's knocked unconscious, he is going to be unconscious. And then I'd like to take over the drone, if I may. Ah, that's only a one in a three chance. But there is a pretty solid chance of shutting it down. Let's do that instead. Taking it out. Yeah, was the right decision. So that'll disable the drone.
Good. As for the remaining soldiers that we do have. Let's maybe get a little bit further back. Don't need to engage them right away. We killed the drone. Might as well move up to here. Which is out of line of sight and we can get a nice little shot next round when moving into line of sight. In the meantime, he does have Shredder. So taking away a bit of uh, their armor is not a bad idea. What are we going to do elsewise? I like the high ground uh, full cover positions here in the tower. Roby is moving into one. Zirkim is moving into the other. And for our melee combatants... Again, I like the idea full cover and just be out of line of sight for now. We could hit everyone with a Volt. Generally not a bad idea. But we would be remaining in half cover and I really don't like the idea of that. Instead, let's move down here, completely out of line of sight. And we can get uh, become aggressive next turn. The only soldier that they can see right now is uh, our Grenadier in full cover with a protocol. So very, very low chances of them to hit him at all. Which means they need to reposition. And that again gives us a good chance to actually deal with them. <clears throat> nice little overwatch there. This is going to hurt because he is, as per the usual, going to use his um, shield. Purifier moves up. There's nothing. Yet. No, double moves. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, first shot, but as you can see, we're pretty well versed against uh, their attacks. Now the Stun Lancers will come in. Interestingly enough, trying to hit Fury, missing him. That's well, going to have consequences for you, dear Stun Lancer. You're going to die next turn. Another missed shot. Yeah, our position is good. I like how this is going. Second stun lancer charges in. Did he really hit our main damage dealer unconscious? <clears throat> that is annoying. <clears throat> I think we're we're out of um, out of revival protocols. Which means 
The guy who was supposed to tank, quote unquote, the boss is now unconscious. 